Hey, what's going on everyone? So in this video, we're gonna prove that um, this function here is linear, okay? So linear. So what does that mean? In other words, it's a linear transformation. So let me recall what that means before we actually um, go through the proof. So a function, let me just uh, do it over, I'll do it over here. So function f from a vector space, say v to w uh, is linear. And here we'll assume that V and W are vector spaces over some field, which is typically like the real numbers or the complex numbers. So it's linear if, so basically for all, the upside down A means for all. So for all U, and I'll put the little arrow there, and V, these are vectors, in our vector space V, we have F of U plus V. So it's additive, right? So it's additive. So this is equal to F of U plus f of v. It's like f is distributing over the addition. You know, it's, a, it's an additive function. And the other condition, and uh, for all u, so for all little u, in our vector space v, and for all c, in our field, which I'll call capital F, f, if you take f of cv, so here we have scalar multiplication, right? A scalar, those are the elements of the fields are called scalars. It's like a number, like three or four or five, you can think of it that way, times a vector. You can pull the number out of the function, right? It, it's like this, f of v. Notice there's no arrow over the c. That's to indicate that it's a scalar and not a vector. Okay, so that's, that's the definition of a linear transformation if you've never seen it. Um, but if you're watching this video, you've probably seen it before, but if not, it's okay. Uh, now hopefully it kind of makes some sense. Um, so now all we have to do is prove that this is a linear transformation. So all we have to do is just carefully go through and satisfy these conditions. So proof, I'm gonna write a little bit small. So first we're gonna check the, the first condition that is additive. So take any, so take any, u, and I have to give the u's and v's components, right? Because they're, they're elements of our cube, right? They're in the domain. So uh, I'm gonna call it, um, hmm, I'm gonna write it like this, x1, y1, z1, that will be our u, and then v, so v here will be, uh, I'll call it x2, y2, z2, just to give it a, a convenient name that we can keep track of, y2, z2, and these will be elements in, uh, let me just, I put an and here, so I don't want to use the in symbol, so I'll say in our cube. Right, I was going to use this symbol here, but when, I, when you put the N there, it kind of, I could have put a comma and then it would have been more appropriate. So I'll use English, N, R cube. So now we have to look at F of U plus V and, and see what happens. So then, so then uh, F of U plus V. Well, we can go ahead and add these components, right? When you add U and V, you just add the components. You just get x1 plus x2. So I'll write it like this. Now, technically, I should have another parentheses here. It should be like this, right? Because I'm adding the vectors. But people tend to be sloppy. And so I'm going to continue the tradition of being sloppy. Uh, I'm not going to put the parentheses there. It's understood. So x1 plus x2, right? It has to fit this form, right? x, y, z. And then we have um, y1 plus y2. Okay, and then z1 plus, plus z2. Okay, so we're just directly applying the definition, right? That, that's how you do these proofs. You just, just carefully satisfy the definition. Okay, so now we're going to use the definition of f. It's the only thing we can do, right? So it'll be uh, x, z. So this is your x and this is your z. So this is equal to, so x is x1 plus x2. And z is z1 plus z2. And we somehow have to show that this is equal to f of u plus uh, f of v, right? So you might say, okay, now I can just look at f of u and f of v and add them up and see if it's the same. You certainly could do that, and that wouldn't be uh, incorrect. However, I think I see another way of doing this. I have not done this problem until now, but notice, right? The natural thing to do would be to break up this vector into two vectors, right? It's being added. So let's try it, right? Worst case, I do it wrong, start the video over or just give up. Uh, so this is x1, z1, x2, z2. Beautiful, right? And then now, I'm going to come over here. So it's a little confusing. x1, z1, right? x1, z1 will be f of x1, y1, z1, right? x1, z1, x1, z1, x1, z1, x1, z1. So this is f of 
x1, y1, z1. That's this, that's x1, z1. x2, z2, x2, z2, x2, y2, z2, x2, z2, x2, y2, z2. Beautiful stuff. This is plus f of x2, y2, z2. That's how pros do it. I don't know if you can still see here, but this, I'll, I'll come down here. This is equal to f of u, right? That's, that's the first one, right? f of u, right? Because that's your u plus f of v. Beautiful. So it's an additive function. So the first condition is clearly satisfied. Now we just have to check the second condition. So um, I, I want to use the same u, but I won't. I won't be lazy. So take any. I'll just say it again. U. This time I'm just going to call it x, y, z. Just so I don't have the annoying ones, okay? In uh, R cubed. And uh, C in our field F. Then... Then what do we have? We have to look at f of c times u. So f of c u. So this is f of c times, and I'm going to write the vector again. So x, y, z, just so you see the extra notation there, right? So see how you have that parentheses there? I, I, I could have had that here, right? Like you, you can actually add it here. You can actually add an extra parenthesis here, and that's okay. It's the same thing, okay? So it causes some confusion, I think, when people are learning. Um, you can distribute the C now. So this is F. Uh, it's really bad handwriting. CX, CY, uh, CZ. Right? Right? So F of CX, CY, and CZ. Right? So what do we have to show? We have to show that we can, that we can pull this out. Right? That we can pull it out. Um, so now we can apply the definition of f, right? That's, that's the only thing we haven't done. So we started with this, right? We, multiple, we wrote down the vector. We distributed. The only thing we can do now is use this. We haven't done this yet. We have to do that to somehow finish the problem. So this is equal to, well, f of x, y, z is x, z. So this is c, x, c, z. This is c, x, c, z. Now you can pull the c out, right? You can't pull it out here, right? It doesn't make, this defeats the point of the proof. Uh, this is x, z. Right, now you can pull it out, scalar multiplication. And xz, that's f of xyz, right, by definition. And that's c f of u, right, because this is f of u, that's f of u. So that's it. So that's how you prove it's a linear transformation. I like to put a little box with an x when I finish my proofs. Um, so yeah, I don't know, just some, uh, some mathematics, some linear algebra. Um, that's how you prove a function uh, is a linear uh, transformation. So that's it, take care.